quienes queráis hacer alguna pregunta, a, por favor levantad las manos, a ver, intentaré verlas todas y atenderemos a todas las que podamos. Entonces, ¿podemos empezar primero? Sí, claro. Esto es muy, muy brave. Te digo que para mí esto es muy, muy valiente. Realmente acabar la escuela de cine y embarcarse en un viaje de 8 ocho, ocho años en su totalidad en Afganistán, inicialmente no para hacer una película, sino para hacer fotografías, es una decisión realmente muy valiente. Sí, yeah, so, but actually it, it was maybe not very brave, but maybe very naive, you know, like going to Afghanistan and uh, in 2007, and actually we didn't know anything about what was, uh, I mean, in 2007 I did not know at the time that I was going to make a film there. Uh, because I was uh, working as a photographer for humanitarian organizations uh, because I wanted to, to discover Afghanistan but I knew also that it was kind of a complicated country where you can't travel just like as a tourist around so I needed to have like a, a kind of a frame of, of people that would know the country or would, could guide me around and I was like, um, in the beginning in 2007 I made a deal with uh, a lot, I think five humanitarian organizations uh, and I did have the proposition, like, look, I'm a beginning photographer, and even I studied, like, uh, cinema at the cinema school, um, but I did a lot of photography on my own as well, and I said, I will work for you for free, and you give me, as a return, like, transportation, accommodation, translation, uh, everything that I, that I need to know about any stuff. And little by little, I was working for these NGOs and uh, by working for them I discovered all the stories of these kids that we saw in the film. Uh, but <clears throat> then, of course, very naive, uh, after two months I said, okay, now I'm gonna discover Afghanistan a bit on my own. And it ended very bad, we ended up in jail a few times and uh, got robbed. And so it was a first very hard lesson for me. And then, in I'm sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, I forgot to <laughs> Vale, nos dice que realmente, mirando para atrás, sí, es valiente, pero que en su momento era más inocente, ¿no? De alguna manera decir, bueno, yo quiero ir a Afganistán, quiero descubrir este país. Sé de antemano que no es un país fácil, que moverse no es moverse como en otros países y que no, no se puede hacer turismo, digamos, pero que realmente él lo que quería era descubrir el país haciendo principalmente fotografía. Con lo cual se, se puso en conversaciones con varias asociaciones humanitarias Um, llegando a un acuerdo para que ellos de alguna manera le diesen el apoyo de, de, de correr con los gastos de alguna manera para viajar por ahí, descubrir lo que era el país y realmente un poco empaparse de Afganistán ¿no? y entonces fue realmente cuando descubrió la historia de, de, de estos niños, esta realidad y que un poco le empezó a dar vueltas a, a las ideas de hacer una película So, um, little by little, after those two first years, because in 2008 I did the same thing, I went back for those humanitarian organizations, but as well, in 2008 I discovered for the first time the war, because I was embedded for the first time as a photographer with the US Army. And then, uh, after I got embedded, I got like all the main indigrants, which you saw before, like the context of the war, and in this war the kids were surviving. And then actually from 2009 on, I decided, okay, I'm going to start making a film about, especially those kids, because I thought they were so strong, they had such a great resilience, uh, great power, very flexible, like mini adults, you know, like little heroes for me. And that convinced me to make the story. Nos cuenta que, que realmente en el 2008, cuando regresó de nuevo a Afganistán, realmente fue cuando, cuando descubrió estos pequeños héroes, que los llaman, ¿no? que realmente son niños, pero que a través de la guerra que él descubría, porque entonces era el momento en el que realmente estando en Afganistán um, estaba de alguna manera más asociado a, a, a la milicia americana y que realmente vivía esta realidad de manera más cercana, que realmente... Um, fue cuando empe empezó a ver el, el, el potencial de esta historia, ¿no? Cómo estos niños han tenido que crecer muy rápido para hacerse con un entorno muy hostil. So, and then from uh, 2009, 2010, we made like first tryouts with the kids. We went back already with a camera, uh, Super 16 also, because we thought, okay, every shot that we're going to shoot in Afghanistan is going to be kind of precious and it might be used in the final edit, so that's why we didn't choose like to work with a small camera in the first place. 
Uh, so we did a lot of tryouts. We made like trailers, and then we started like pitching sessions in 2010, 2011. Uh, but at that time, in 2011, especially in part when we were left alone in Afghanistan without the army, then we really felt, okay, this is going to be like a, kind of a challenging thing to make this film possible in Afghanistan. In the first place to make people understand what was cinema about, because nobody knew about it. Uh, they thought, you know, when they saw us with a camera, they thought we were carrying weapons or a rocket launcher or something. So it was like, Really, that was the biggest challenge in the first place, I think. Nos cuenta que, que realmente el, el, el inicio de la, los rodajes en sí fueron como pequeños trailers, ¿no? Hacer pruebas con los niños y con las cámaras y ver un poco cómo, cómo se materializaba en audiovisual. Que, que realmente en el momento que dejaron de, de estar arropados por la milicia, digamos, es cuando se dieron cuenta de la realidad, de la dura realidad y el desafío realmente que significaría hacer esta película, ¿no? Decidieron mantener el Super 16 porque realmente para ellos cada imagen que iban a lograr no sabían cuántas más iban a tener y cada una era una pequeña joya, pero que, que de alguna manera en ese momento fue ese, ese momento de darse cuenta de, de la realidad y lo, lo difícil que iba a ser hacer este proyecto. So maybe in the meantime there are already some questions or... ¿Alguna pregunta en el, en el, ¿alguna pregunta en el público? So the question is if, if it's all shot on film. Uh, yes, uh, everything is on, uh, on Super 16 and on 35 millimeter shot, but mostly in uh, Super 16. Um, there were two reasons for that because uh, I love film, you know, like I think it's something very organic, something still very beautiful. I've been, you know, at my film school, everything is still at, at film. Um, but I think also the the reason why we shot on Super 16 was also because of this format. It's not like the most perfect format in that sense that it still has a lot of grain and, and it has something rough as well. And I think this was going very well together with the, the characteristics of Afghanistan, like the brutality of life and the roughness of all this. Um, also the grain was going very well with the sand and, and the light. But the second reason was also uh, a technical reason because uh, we thought in the beginning we were going to shoot digital, but we did test and the, the biggest problem was uh, electricity. Because in Afghanistan there is like, there is, it's nothing, you know, it's like middle ages, it's um, everywhere where you come outside of Kabul, uh, you can't find any electricity. You, so you have to you bring in your fuel, your generators, everything for any shoot you want to do. So we, we, I mean, if you shoot digitally, then you need like many batteries because it's like much more consuming than a film camera, but also like hard drives, uh, computers, video assists, and with a, a one battery of a, an Aliflex, you know you can shoot like 10 rolls of film. And even when it was cold, uh, you know, you just put a battery somewhere on your back and, and you can continue. And in the worst case scenario, we had, we thought in the beginning, okay, this is never we're gonna use it, but we had a Bolex camera with us, like this very old cameras from the 50s with a spring. And we thought, you know, like, this is worst case scenario, just in case. And it seemed that like after, at, at the very end of the film, you know, we looked back and we shot like one third of the film with this Bolex, you know, because it was so cold, that batteries fell, that were completely empty or, that the camera got stuck, or and so we start cutting rolls and smaller rolls, and and this Bolex saved us, you know. Like uh, so, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons. La pregunta era a ver si era todo rodado en película y dice que que sí, entonces fue todo rodado en película por dos razones, principalmente bueno. Uh, prim principalmente por la cuestión de, de la estética, ¿no? porque realmente esa estética granulada, esa estética ruda, un poco, mmm, poco trabajada, iba muy bien con lo rudo que es la vida en Afganistán, con, con la arena, con la luz, con, con un poco el entorno que estaban representando, y segundo, porque realmente uh, la escasez de electricidad hacía que fuese muy difícil rodar en digital. De hecho, cuando, cuando se lo plantearon en un momento, sabían que tenían que llevarse sus propias baterías, sus propios generadores, entonces realmente no era una, una opción muy buena para esto. E incluso el salvavidas que han tenido es un Bolex, un, un, una cámara de los años 50 y 60 que, que funciona con muelle y que, vamos, aunque sea lo más 
precario de alguna manera o lo más antiguo, realmente les, les ha salvado muchísimo en esos momentos en los que hacía demasiado frío y las baterías fallaban o ya no, no quedaba manera, digamos, que no fuese la manual de poder seguir haciendo la película. ¿Alguien por aquí? He visto una mano hace, hace un momento. Bueno, era yo, pero respondió. Ah. ¿Quién más quiere preguntar algo? Pregunta que realmente cómo y cuándo fue que esa relación empezó a cambiar con la gente que, que se volviese un poco más cercana. Um, so you mean the relation between me and the kids? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's. I think it was like spending a lot of time with them and getting to you know to earn trust. And by earning trust, also this was going together with learning about their culture and in the first place uh, speaking their language. Uh, because you know everything everything in Afghanistan has to come from a very personal way. Nothing is on distant that you just call or whatever because they simply don't have phones. So you need to be present. But not only with the kids, I think everybody around, you know, like every location where we wanted to shoot a part of the film, we needed to understand like the political power structure because uh, again, we were shooting outside of Kabul and in, in the province side in Afghanistan, the government is not present anymore. So you have like all little power structures of warlords, uh, of Taliban, of militias, of whatever. And you need to understand all this and how, who are the influential people, who are the people that you have to get on your side to make, first of all, a shooting possible. And from then, from there on, it was like, okay, staying together with the village elders, with the mullahs, with the, with the kids, and, and you know, spending a lot of time and explaining them what we want to do. Uh, also with the kids, I, I start writing the script also on their dreams and on what I thought what was going to happen with them after the withdrawal of the troops. So it was also like uh, building the whole story together with them. So we spent like months and months uh, together with them. Y seguimos. Um, nos cuenta que realmente la relación se vuelve más estrecha trabajando mucho lo que es la confianza. Ya no solo la confianza directa con los niños, digamos, sino con todo el entorno. Porque en el momento que sales de Kabul y te adentras en, en, en las provincias más lejanas, uh, realmente hay de alguna manera diferentes estados de poder. ¿no? Desde señores de la guerra, diferentes milicias, um, instituciones locales que si no te las ganas uh, dificultas muchísimo el poder hacer esto. ¿no? Aparte de eso, uh, nos cuenta que realmente él, al empezar a elaborar lo que era el propio guión, lo basaba mucho en la confianza y la relación que ya había establecido con esos niños. Y que realmente él lo que quería representar era un poco los sueños de los niños y lo que, cómo se imaginaban ellos su vida una vez que se hubiese acabado lo, lo que era la guerra en sí. Um, how many, first, uh, it nos, nos pregunta que al principio quizás era él solo, pero luego realmente según iba avanzando el, el proyecto, ¿cuánta gente formaba el equipo? No? It's um I think in the beginning before uh, we start the screening I told that I think the, the whole process of eight years in Afghanistan was actually search how to make this film possible. And this was reflecting also on the crew members. So in the beginning I thought in the very beginning when I was preparing the film, I was also only counting actually on my friends, my African friends. We paid them you know, I paid them a small salary with the promise, okay, when we're gonna start a shoot that we that it would earn much better. Um, and that, you know, like in the first, the first period was actually, but later on I discovered this, that was the best way of working. Because we were very low profile. Uh, those Afghan friends around me, they knew the structure, they knew like what was going on in the province side and also those power structures. But the problem was at that time, we were like not having the permissions from the Ministry of Culture yet and from, 
uh, Belgian production and the co-producers. So we were like still developing the film, which was like a kind of a stage in between. Um, so a lot of police and government people, they thought that we had other ideas, that we were like cooperating with Taliban, that we were spies, that we were CIA, that we were doing like totally different things. And then in 2013, when we started the first shoot, I said, okay, I needed to have like a big room of people who wants to take all this corrupt stuff, you know, people, I mean like, like governmental people who want to have bribes from us and, and all that stuff. I want to, I want to delegate it and I want, I really needed to focus on my kids and on my directing. Just don't want to have to trust me. And, um, <laughs> <risa> nos, nos, nos cuenta que realmente ese, esa relación de confianza realmente tenía muchas bases, ¿no? porque uh, una cosa era elaborar confianza con quien vas a, a, a querer sacar en, en tu imagen o hacer parte de tu proyecto, digamos, pero que también se trataba mucho de tener apoyos locales, ¿no? a trabajar con gente local que, que se pudiese comunicar mejor y que pudiese un poco abolir muchas de las, digamos, paranoias que les surgían, que eran muy, muy variopintas, ¿no? Desde pensar que, que podían ser espías o que podían ser de la CIA o que, que realmente incluso fuesen talibanes ocultos, ¿no? De alguna manera. Y que realmente eh, fue, fue una relación constante de elaborar esa cercanía, ¿no? Que, que luego realmente también aprendieron que, que la mejor manera de hacer esta película era mantener un perfil muy bajo, una relación muy directa con tu gente de apoyo, aunque inicialmente prometieses dieses un sueldo y luego prometieses otro, pero poco a poco irlo elaborando, digamos, para que para que fuese posible, porque realmente tenía mucha adversidad. So and then again in 2013, I thought, okay, we're gonna bring in a bigger crew and they're gonna solve all these issues for me. But that was actually a big mistake because we were too big, too visible, too much equipment. Everybody knew where we were going to. We were too much predictable. And at some point, after the first shoot, uh, shoot like we were like one week shooting, we, we got attacked by Taliban. And so it was very bad, so lots of equipment was destroyed, uh, everybody had to be evacuated back to Belgium. And then actually, we learned that we had to go back to the much more low profile way, and we had to work only with Afghans, um, with many plans, many flexibility, like only one camera, one car, and a lot of time. And um, if A plan was not working, we should jump to, to F plan and go back to C plan. And you know, we were like constantly also in touch with the editor. So if you ask, I mean, the very end of the shoot where we shot like 80% of the movie with those kids on horseback and stuff, uh, this was this kind of way of working, and it was only me together with uh, three key Afghan crew members, you know, that I trained as well. Uh, so they learned how to become an assistant, and it took a lot of time, but it was like only one sound engineer, myself, and a production manager. And then, of course, like a lot of people for gathering the horses together, organizing the supplies, because this was a much bigger organization, but the key crew was only like three or four people. Nos cuenta que, que en 2013, realmente cuando empezaron a, a rodar, digamos, era, llamaban demasiado la atención, ¿no? se sabía demasiado que, que, que a dónde iban a ir, que se levantaba mucha sospecha y que eso dificultaba mucho lo que era la propia producción. Entonces, realmente decidieron que, que tenían que reestructurar la manera en la que estaban haciendo la película que era mejor tener un equipo más pequeño, gente más local, incluso si tú tenías que formarlos y enseñarles a ser un asistente, porque realmente eso abría muchas puertas y a la par hacía que fuese factible, digamos, a poder continuar con el proyecto, porque cuando llamaba mucho la atención, cuando era muy señalado, si la gente sabía en qué andaban o, o por dónde andaban, realmente ese llamar la atención les llevó a uno de los momentos clave y más difíciles de la producción, que fue un ataque talibán en el que, en el que perdieron gran parte de material y que realmente fue para ellos un punto de inflexión y de aprendizaje de cómo hacer esto, porque realmente una película como esta no se ha hecho siguiendo una, 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 una sola técnica, sino reestructurando y volviendo al plan A, al plan C, al plan B, a dif diferentes maneras para solucionar cada, cada, cada momento de la producción o cada, cada momento de la propia historia. How about the film again? Uh, you were then sending all the film. Oh, okay. 
Eh, lo pregunto en español mejor y tú me lo eh, Sobre la película, entonces estás rodando todo en película, has dicho que trabajabas todo el tiempo en contacto con el editor, que supongo que estaba en Bélgica, el editor. Entonces mandabas todo la, el film, toda la película a Bélgica, la revelaban allí y ¿cuánto tardabas tú en, en ver cómo estaban yendo las cosas, los planos que hacías? Supongo que tardabas bastante. Yeah, um, good question. Um, luckily, we had a very, very good uh, Belgian ambassador in Kabul, and uh, we had, of course, uh, like you had, uh, the Belgian army, uh, part of the NATO in Afghanistan. So the Belgian army did a lot of us. They actually transported all the rolls of film, exposed back to Belgium, together with the Belgian embassy. And all the film was stored at the Belgian embassy. So whenever we were doing a shoot, like even it was very far in the mountains, all the exposed film was carried with a guy, several guys with rucksacks over all the mountains. And we were communicating with satellite telephones to some points where the guys should deliver the film picked up by a jeep or by a bus, continued to Kabul until it arrived. But sometimes they were on the way like more than 10 days. And they brought like new film back to the, to the shoot. Um, and then the army, time by time, every, I think, one or two weeks, they flew in like new film and they brought back exposed film to Belgium where it was developed and where the editors stopped watching the Russians. So we, we were had also a script, you know, like, and with, in the script, the, the editor was also aware, okay, we have like, in this part, we have this kind of options. So if this is not going to work because this is a tricky scene, because it's Taliban controlled area, we can jump on this one. So he knows also what are, yeah, the other sideways. And so we were talking, uh, yeah, on the phone about these options. Realmente solo fue posible porque tienen un embajador belga muy bueno en Kabul y que ha apoyado muchísimo este proyecto. ¿no? A la par, realmente, por aquel entonces, um, la Armada Belga también estaba ahí y también les, les protegió de alguna manera y les asistió. ¿no? Porque cada vez que, que completaban un, un bache o un, un lote de, de película, uh, se lo echaban a la mochila y a través de las montañas uh, hacía que volviese hasta Bélgica para revelarlo y saber y que el editor pudiese ver un poco realmente qué material habían sacado pero que a veces tardaban hasta 10 días en saber realmente qué tenían. ¿no? A la par, cuando regresaban, digamos, les traían película nueva y podían continuar un poco rellenando las partes de ese guión que habían elaborado que veían que todavía estaban un poco descubiertos de alguna manera. Um, your film is, is absolutely stunning and it is a, um, one of those projects that really makes me and I expect lots of our public to want to see your next project. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Peter, por estar con nosotros.